Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Bloor Streetcar. This streetcar would become one of Toronto's most important streetcars, becoming the main east-west route of, for the city, and would eventually become what is today the Bloor Danforth subway line. So let's get into it. The history of the streetcar on Bloor Street begins in 1890. This original line was built by the Toronto Street Railway Company. However, it wasn't completed by the time the company's charter had expired. Due to this, the line opened on May 29, 1890 under the ownership of the City of Toronto and would use horse-drawn cars running in 20-minute intervals. This original line would run between Sherburne Street and Clinton Street, but was soon after extended west to Christie Street. In September of 1891, the City of Toronto granted a 30-year operations franchise to the Toronto Railway Company. The Bloor Line was then extended west from Christie Street to Dufferin Street. The TRC would then alter the route on Bloor Street, creating the famous Belt Line, not to be confused with the short-lived Belt Line Railway, a video for another time. I won't go into any detail about the Belt Line since it is a bit outside the scope of this video, although I will do a short video on it since its route didn't last all that long. On August 1, 1893, the Bloor Line was converted from horse-drawn cars to electric trolleys. Three years later, on January 1, 1896, the Bloor Streetcar Line was renamed Bloor and McCall and was extended down Young Street to Front Street. In May of 1896, the Bloor Streetcar was extended west from Dufferin Street to Lansdowne Road. On November 11, 1909, the Bloor Streetcar was renamed again back to its original name Bloor and began operating a service between Lansdowne Road and Church Street. The Bloor and McCall Streetcars would continue to operate although the route had been changed to operate on new tracks south on Ossington Avenue from Bloor and then east on Harbord Street to Spadina Avenue. This change would take effect on November 11, 1909. This route would form the basis of what would one day become the Harbord Streetcar. The Toronto Railway Company was reluctant to extend the Bloor Streetcar west of Lansdowne for a variety of reasons. One of the main ones being the railway tracks west of Lansdowne Road between it and Dundas Street. There was currently no underpass so the streetcars could not cross the railway tracks. The TRC did build tracks along Dundas to Bloor Street, however they had no plans to extend service further west along Bloor Street. Likewise, service east of Broadview was also going underserved. At the time there was no link between the Bloor Streetcar and Broadview Avenue as the Prince Edward Viaduct, more commonly referred to as the Bloor Viaduct, had not been built yet, so the crossing of the Don Valley occurred further south. By 1910, the TRC was entering the later years of its charter and was no longer interested in expanding service with little time to make a profit of it. The City of Toronto had also annexed vast tracts of land that needed streetcar service for development and the TRC did not see it as a money-making prospect with such little time left on their charter. In 1912, the City of Toronto would go it alone and begin laying tracks east of Broadview Avenue to the city limits at Luttrell Avenue for what would be known as the Danforth Streetcar. This line would open on October 30th and would be instrumental in the, in the development of the area and would be operated by the Toronto Civic Railway. As well, to the west, the city also constructed a new single track extension west from Dundas Street to Quebec Avenue on February 23, 1915. Later that year, the line would be double tracked and extended to Runnymede Road on a temporary track on the north side of the road. While these lines did bring development and transit service to the developing areas of Toronto, service was fractured between four different streetcar lines leaving gaps in service. The first of these gaps was closed on December 14, 1918, when the Prince Edward Viaduct opened allowing Bloor Street to cross the Don Valley and the Rosedale Ravine. The City of Toronto laid tracks on the viaduct, thus linking Sherburne Street at Broadview Avenue. With this, the TRC extended the Bloor Streetcar from its current eastern terminus at Sherburne Street to Broadview Avenue. 
The Bloor and McCall streetcar service was also discontinued at this time. It is worth noting, however, that service on the Bloor streetcar, which was owned by the Toronto Railway Company, was not merged with the Danforth streetcar, which was owned by the Toronto Civic Railway. So passengers would have had to have transferred between lines at Broadview and thus pay another fare. When the Toronto Transportation Commission took over operations in 1921, they began the process of integrating the former Toronto Civic Railway lines with the former Toronto Railway Company lines. One of the first results of this would be the Broadview Streetcar, which began service on October 3, 1921, running between Lutrell Avenue and Downtown Toronto via Danforth Avenue and Broadview Avenue. The Bloor Streetcar would continue to terminate at Broadview Avenue until November of 1921 when it was extended east to Coxwell Avenue. Over to the west, the branch of the Bloor Streetcar that operated from Dundas Street was renamed to the Bloor West Streetcar and extended to a loop at Jane Street. While this line operated between Dundas Street and Jane Street, due to the tracks along Dundas Street, this line was connected to the rest of the system, and as such, some King Street cars would operate to Jane Street during rush hour. It is worth noting, however, that for some reason the Bloor Streetcar was never fully extended to Lutrell Avenue, and so a true crosstown service didn't quite exist yet, and a transfer was required. This, however, changed on July 1st of 1923, when the Bloor Streetcar was extended to Lutrell, thus allowing for a one-seat ride from Lutrell Avenue in the east to Lansdowne Road in the west. At the same time, the Broadview Streetcar was merged with the King Streetcar. Shortly after, service on this side of the line would be augmented by a rush hour tripper cars, the first being the Church Tripper, which operated between Coxwell Avenue and the downtown core via Danforth Avenue and Church Street. This Tripper would be merged with the Danforth Tripper, which was operated from Lutrell Avenue to the downtown core. The final gap in service on this line would be closed on August 25, 1925, when an underpass was opened allowing Bloor Street to cross the railway tracks east of Dundas Street. With this, the last two segments of the Bloor Streetcar were linked and the Bloor West Streetcar was merged with the Bloor Streetcar, forming a continuous line from Lutrell Avenue to Jane Street. From this point on, service on Bloor Street and Danforth Avenue would be augmented by multiple tripper cars to ferry passengers from the outer reaches of the city into the downtown core via the new Crosstown route along Bloor and Danforth. In 1946, residents of Toronto voted in favour for the city's proposed subway plan, which would see a subway underneath Young Street and a streetcar subway under Queen Street. Anyone who lives in Toronto, or knows of Toronto's transit network, however, knows that one of these projects was never built, that being the Queen Street subway. So why? As to not go into too much detail about the Queen Street subway proposal, that proposal, just like the one on Young Street, is from what would be at the time a bygone era. The line under Queen Street was proposed at a time when Queen Street was the dominant east-west route. However, with the introduction of the Bloor Streetcar, commuter patterns began to change, especially in the east end. Due to the northeasterly travel of Lake Ontario to the east, Queen Street's ability and utility into Scarborough was limited, while Danforth Avenue, on the other hand, was already an important thoroughfare in the East End. Because of this, commuters from Scarborough would find themselves funneled onto Danforth Avenue and not Queen Street. It was for this reason, along with the continued development along the Bloor Danforth corridor, that really swayed the discussion away from Queen Street and onto Bloor and Danforth. The existence of the Prince Edward Viaduct as well cannot be understated since the bridge was built with the provisions for a subway line on the lower deck, and if it's there why not use it, right? Had the viaduct not been built, then chances are Queen Street remains the main east-west thoroughfare and the Bloor Danforth corridor never really takes off due to the large gap in service caused by the Don Valley and the Rosedale Ravine. Regardless, unlike Queen Street, the subway under Young Street was built due to Young Street remaining the city's primary north-south artery and the Young Streetcar being over capacity. 
When the Young subway opened, special streetcar platforms were built at Young and Bluer to allow passengers to easily access the subway from the Bluer streetcar. As the years went on following the opening of the Young subway, passenger and car traffic continued to increase along Bluer Street and Danforth Avenue, thus making it clear to the TTC at least that an east-west subway line would have to be built under Bluer and Danforth. At the time, planners for Metropolitan Toronto still favored a subway under Queen Street while running under Bloor and Danforth outside the downtown core, a plan known as the Flying U. The TTC, however, overruled planners at Metro Toronto and instead convinced Metro Council that, and the province that a line entirely under Bloor and Danforth was the better option. When the University extension of the Young Subway opened, service on the Bluer streetcar wasn't significantly changed, although other routes didn't fare as well. A true connection of the Bluer streetcar to St. George Station never came to fruition, as the, Bedf as the old Bedford Loop was not replaced by a streetcar loop for the new St. George Station, thus forcing an on-street transfer between the subway and the streetcar. This is in contrast to the 4 Annette trolley bus, which was properly routed through the new St. George Station bus terminal and thus didn't require passengers to have a transfer to transfer between the bus and the subway. All of this would be moot, however, as on February 26, 1966, the Bluer Danforth subway line opened and with it the near destruction of the Bluer streetcar. After the opening of the subway, streetcar service between Keel Street and Woodbine Avenue would be discontinued, leaving only two stub lines at each end of the former streetcar line. The first of these is a short line between Woodbine Station and Lutrell Avenue. This line would connect to the subway via a streetcar loop next to the current bus terminal. From here, passengers would head downstairs to board the subway. Today, nothing remains of the old loop on the surface, save for the tracks themselves which can still be seen today on Strathmore Boulevard. Underground, however, the original hallway that led to the streetcar still exists, although it is off-limits to the public. You can find out more about this on Transit Toronto's website, linked below. Over in the West End, a similar stub line was left after the dissolution of the Bluer streetcar. This short line ran from Keel Station to Jane Street. Just like at Woodbine, a streetcar loop was built to link passengers from the subway to the streetcar. This loop was where what is today a retirement home. Passengers would disembark the streetcars and then head upstairs on moving walkways, like what used to be at Spadina to access the subway platforms. As well, just like at Woodbine, the original access to the streetcar still exists, although, once, although it is once again closed to the public. On May 11, 1968, the extensions of the Bluer Danforth subway to Warden and Islington stations opened, and with them, service on the two remaining stubs of the Bluer streetcar was dissolved, ending 78 years of streetcar service on Bluer Street and Danforth Avenue. Today, essentially nothing remains of the former Bluer streetcar, save for the segment of track on Strathmore Boulevard by Woodbine Station, the abandoned hallways at Woodbine and Keel, which would have led to the old streetcar loops, and the now unused Coxwell Car House, which was the last home of the Bluer streetcar in the East End until it was converted into a bus garage and then eventually fully shut down in 2002. Unlike with other lost streetcar lines, there is nothing really to lament here beyond the nostalgia for streetcars on Bluer and Danforth. Yes, the streetcar is gone, however, unlike other routes which you could justify the continued existence for, there is no real justification to be had for the preservation of streetcars on Bluer and Danforth. The line was at capacity and was replaced by a higher order of transit. Ultimately, nothing was lost except for the sight of streetcars on the street, and so the loss of the Bluer streetcar is, a perfect, is perfectly acceptable when you understand that it wasn't shut down out of some misguided plan like other lines which fell victim to the streetcar abandonment policy, but instead was simply replaced by the subway because it was the logical thing to do. And with that, I will end this video. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button because I have more videos like this planned. 
And if you have anything you want to say about the Bluer Streetcar, please don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.